We're joined now here at the table by two of the attorneys representing E. Jean Carroll, Mike Ferrara and Sean Crowley. Thank you both for being here. Um, Sean, let me start with you. What was decisive yesterday for the jury? It was just such a sound victory that the jury, who had heard from Miss Carroll, from E. Jean Carroll, for three days, she sat on the witness stand and answered question after question after question for three days, that they unanimously believed her. And it only took them a couple year, a couple hours to decide that. Yeah, it did come back very quickly. You were in the room taking some of the depositions. That was not your voice we heard on the tape there for Donald Trump last October. How important were those moments? For example, when he said, she's not my type, but then thought she was his <laughs> ex-wife, Marla Maples, in a photograph. Um, that was extremely important. I think, I think that what was so striking at the deposition that was taken by uh, Robbie Kaplan um, was not just that he continued to deny that he had um, sexually assaulted Ms. Carroll, but that he doubled down. He doubled down with, she's not my type. He doubled down, we played him the Access Hollywood video. He smiled through it as, as we played it for him. Um, and then he said, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, this is just what stars do. We get to do these sorts of things. So I think it was really important that the jury actually heard him say those words from his own mouth. And then to point to your colleague and say, you're not my type either. Just a, kind of a breathtaking moment. So, Mike, uh, one of the questions that's been asked in, the, in these last 12 hours or so is, is this distinction between sexual abuse and rape? How do you explain that to our viewers? The jury did not find for rape but did for sexual abuse. What's the difference there? Yeah, the difference is, I mean, there are legal elements to sort of both of these um, ideas. I think at the end of the day, the takeaway is Donald Trump said, I wasn't there I don't know her, it never happened. And so the jury's verdict was resounding in rejecting that. Um, and so I think that's sort of the takeaway there. As, yeah. So, I mean, on this idea, I mean, the, let's talk about the defamation part of it, too. Yeah. Like, what, as, as, you know, what do you think was decisive there for this jury to come back with the affirmative on that part of this as well? Right, so there the jury, so, for, so, so the jury finds, okay, the sexual assault happened. Okay, so now he's lied about it. Right. And then they're asked, is, it, is he doing it like with ill will? Is it, is it out of spite? Those sorts of questions. Um, actual malice is one of the terms. And so that, that's layered on to this idea. Not only is he denying it, not only is he lying, but he's lying in a way that the jury found was sort of spiteful and, and made out of ill will. Mika? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm curious, uh, Sean, that first of all, what we're seeing here play out, which I think in, in the history of Donald Trump is historic, and it's probably the first time Donald Trump, the former president, uh, the former financier or whatever he called himself, is being held accountable for his words, and it is his words that brought him down. And let's also make sure that we include not just sexual abuse, but defamation um, that was at play here. It was really the defamation that, that he inflicted on E. Jean Carroll that actually prompted this whole thing. So tell us what the strategy is for his appeal. Uh, e. Jean Carroll is validated on so many levels here, but how does she get the money? So, as you, as you said, Mika, um, there will be an appeal process that will probably take a year or more to play out. Um, I, I think we saw Donald Trump promising, even before there was a verdict yesterday, promising that he would that he would appeal. Um, you know, I think the, the trial was strong. The judge was extremely strong. His his rulings were sound. We don't expect there to be any actual issues on appeal. Um, so we do expect that that e. Jean will be paid at some point. Um, it, it's just going to take a little a little bit of time to, to get through the courts. George Conway has a question next. George. Yeah, I mean, I mean, does he have anything in particular, uh, given the lack of evidence that, that that he presented? I mean, is there any way he could win, even if he could find some kind of legal error in the in the charge or in the or in anything the judge did? I doubt it. I don't think so, um, particularly because, as, as we know, well, we saw his words on the deposition where he was legally compelled to be questioned. He didn't actually bother to show up at the trial himself um, and subject himself to the same sort of cross-examination that his attorney did of E. Jean Carroll for two and a half days. So, Mike, let me ask you a question that even people I know who are very sympathetic to E. Jean Carroll who don't like Donald Trump were asking. Why now? 
Why did she come forward some 25 years, even more, uh, with this allegation in her book a couple of years ago and, frankly, put herself through this? I mean, to take on yeah, Donald right. Trump in a public forum is no small task. Why did she do it? Yeah, and she testified to this. So um, she was going to write a book, uh, What Do We Need Men For?, which we heard a lot about at trial. Um, and she was gonna, it was going to be a tour around the United States, uh, eating at uh, restaurants named for women in cities named after women. And the, basically, the day she was going to leave, uh, the Harvey Weinstein allegations started coming out, the, right, the sort of Me Too movement was, was happening. And she said, I, how can I write a book about other women and their thoughts on men without including what's happened to me in my life and my, my encounters with men. Uh, and so she, part of her book was a list of men who had mistreated her. And, and, one of, and some of them were obviously satirical and others were more serious. And the Donald Trump sort of portion was a very serious excerpt that she thought she had to include and she felt like she had been silent for too long. And so, Sean, what were the early conversations like, not just about making this public, which is a big deal for any woman who's gone through something like this, but to take on Donald Trump in a public forum, knowing what his reaction would be, knowing what the reaction of his supporters would be, knowing that prominent members of the United States Congress would dismiss her out of hand. Was there any doubt about bringing this case? There was no doubt about bringing this case. Um, I think she had some she had some big doubts about whether at first to go public with her allegations. She feared that he would do exactly what he ended up doing. Um, but as someone who had been a advice columnist, a journalist for her whole life, she felt like it was time, instead of sort of giving advice to other women, to talk about herself and things that had happened to her. So, Sean, you just said it, that he, what he had been doing, he'd been attacking her throughout. He's still doing that. He did it yesterday on True Social. He's got a primetime town hall tonight. We know he's going to be on the campaign trail again in the coming days. He's going to keep doing it. How do you guys prepare your client, but also through the appeals process as those attacks continue? I think that Eugene is prepared for it. Um, she has been withstanding his attacks for the last four years. Um, I think she expects that there will be more. But the fact that a jury of her, of her peers and his peers unanimously agreed with her and believed her is buoying her up and is going to support her as he continues to make these outlandish claims. Jennifer Palmieri has a question for you guys. Jen. Um, when, obviously, E. Jean Carroll is your client, but when you're trying this case, did you think about a bigger principle that you were also arguing that was at stake? Mike, go ahead. Sure. Yeah, I mean, um, absolutely. Um, it, I think that this is, I hope, I, I think we, I speak for Sean as well and Robbie and, and Eugene when we say that we very much hope that this gives other women who, and anyone who has suffered sexual abuse or rape, um, so, th th I, we hope that they think to themselves, I can come forward and people will believe me. Um, I can, you know, I can, I can say my truth and I'm not going to be dismissed. I'm not going to be ridiculed. And um, it's not going to be this, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to walk in a court and have my past necessarily, you know, dragged out that the people are going to believe me. And um, we hope that it, it gives courage, you know, uh, to, to anyone who has been through something like this. So, Sean, I'm curious, moving forward, especially preparing for an appeal, um, are there any constraints as to what um, you can include as you prepare to defend yourself against an appeal, defend E. Jean Carroll? Like uh, in the Manhattan DA case, the judge is now saying he can't talk about evidence and things like that. If he continues to defame her um, in the public arena over and over and over again, can that be used in the appeal? It can't be used in the appeal in this case. This case, the appeal is contained in the record that is existing now. Mm -hmm. um, I will note, we do have another case against him. Um, he, Before his statement in October defaming her, um, he actually issued a series of statements back in June of 2019, right after she came forward, in which he said, you know, more of the same, this is a hoax, she's right. a paid operative of the Democratic Party, she's not my type, those sorts of things. So. Um, e. Jean brought her first lawsuit back in November of 2019. That's on a bit of a different track because uh, Donald Trump mm -hmm. is saying you can't sue me for something I did while I was president. Um, that's making its way back through the court. And so that is still very much a live issue. It's going to be a little bit harder for him to fight it now that there is a jury that has found that he sexually abused her and then lied about it uh, when he denied it. Um, but that case is still very much alive. Oh, so it continues. Attorneys representing E. Jean Carroll, Mike Ferrara, and Sean Crowley, thank you very much Thanks, guys. for being thank on you. the Thanks show so this much. morning. We're